put these on. All right, we are here at Jason Kenney's. Going to be the big victory party tonight because there is a majority for the UCP that has been called. And we actually have some visuals of when it was called. And the crowd just went nuts when they finally saw that this happened. Jason Marcus from McLean's is here with me. So what do you take on this? It didn't take long for us to get uh, the reaction and the... The polls were showing a pretty strong result. We know that uh, the UCP has a lot of volunteers, a lot of enthusiasm. Usually uh, the, the more enthusiastic team is the one that wants to drive change. And so, no, I'm not surprised about this. I think most people were expecting this. When you look at the riding map, the way the riding shook out, um, the UCP was, wasn't leading by that much against the uh, NDP, but the NDP, w most of their votes and support was concentrated in Edmonton. You can't win Alberta if you only win Edmonton. Mm -hmm. There are only 20 seats there. You have to do much better than that. Um, you know, the NDP are doing okay in Calgary, but it looks like they might get wiped out in most of the rest of the, the province. And so, no, I'm not surprised that it was uh, early for a lot of broadcasters to predict uh, UCP Premier Kenny. You know, and Kenny kept touting throughout his campaign that they had the largest party, over about 160,000 members. And you think that helped them get those early results and, and get the groundswell going? You know, they had very competitive uh, nomination contests. Because in some areas of the province, say like the small towns like Medicine Hat or Drayton Valley or St. Paul or Three Hills, um, to win the UCP nomination is to win a seat. Um, so those, they're very, very competitive ones, even in Calgary, even in Edmonton, because they knew that that's a very likely way to get into government. Um, and through doing that, he actually built parties. They were, um, these candidates had to enlist members, build support, build their networks. Um, that's something the NDP didn't really have ever, um, not in this election, not in past elections. So they actually would have struggled at, on the organizational level in that regard. All right. So uh, Kenny is now the premier or will be in a few moments. And uh, what do you foresee for the UCP in the next couple of months ahead? I'd imagine he's gonna be, get, try to work very quick. Um, and he's spoken about this. He says, we're gonna have a summer, a summer session of the legislature. We'll have our bill one to repeal the carbon tax. We'll have our other bills to uh, repeal some farm legislation and some other regulations uh, from the UCP. Um, he's, gonna, uh, he's saying he's already gonna enact the uh, turn off the taps legislation. I don't think he's actually gonna turn off the taps yet, <laughs> but the threat's gonna become more real. Um, he's probably gonna take actions against Justin Trudeau. Um, I think we're gonna, he's been planning this for a long time. He knew this was coming. Um, he's preparing. I think we're going to see him hit the ground running. He already apparently has a press conference planned tomorrow afternoon in Edmonton. Um, this guy is a preparer. He's very careful, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot of decisive action really quickly. And what do you see on the flip side for the NDP, who's gone from power to now likely the, the opposition? You know, this was probably not unexpected for them. I mean, in the first place in 2015, they expected their dream was winning official opposition. Rachel Notley might finally get to fulfill that dream. <laughs> now, it happens that in the last several cases in other provinces, Ontario, Quebec, um, British Columbia, where the premier has lost lost power, they tend to resign quickly, leave their party leadership, let somebody else take over. I don't see that happening here. And if it does happen, if Rachel Notley doesn't want to serve as leader of this opposition, uh, this party's going to be lost in the woods. Uh, without her, they're kind of nothing. Would that present an opportunity for the other parties, the Alberta party, depending on whether or a not they get A lot's going to depend on whether they have a foothold in the legislature. If you're white swept out of the legislature, like the Liberals, and who knows if the Alberta Party is as well, and the Freedom Conservative Party, uh, if they're swept out of the legislature, um, th that's a major loss in confidence for them. Um, this really does become a two-party state, and those uh, parties struggle for any voice at all. All right, thanks so much for your thoughts. Jason Markusov, we are here at the UCP election headquarters where they have won a majority, and we've got a happy crowd, but we're going to head back over now to Carly.